In this nugget, we're going to focus on Smart View Monitor. Here are the opt-out questions for this video. So take a moment, hit pause, read these four questions. If you already know the answers to these questions and you're comfortable already with Smart View Monitor, hey, I'll see you in the next video. For everybody else, we're going to take a nice close and personal view of what this tool, Smart View Monitor, can do for us. Let's begin. I'd like you to imagine it's Wednesday morning. The day's going great and our boss walks up to us and says, I'm concerned. And so we say, well, what are you concerned about that we can help with? And our boss says, well, I was reading some articles about memory on our gateways. And I realized that we've done some updates. We updated to R76, and then we updated to R77. We also added some more software blades and features. And I want to make sure that we're not just running out of memory on any of our firewalls. Could you do me a quick favor and find out what the available memory is on all of our 25 gateways? So we tell our boss that'll be no problem, we'd be happy to do it. And the reason we're doing it with a smile on our face is because we have installed on our firewalls the license feature of monitoring. And oh my goodness, is this so powerful. Monitoring really is the answer to how is everything going? How is the memory? How is the CPU? Who's currently connected? What traffic is flowing through the firewalls? What are my highest sources, my highest destination, the highest services are being used? And all of that information can be very easily consolidated and organized using this fabulous tool called Smart View Monitor. We can also set thresholds and alerts. For example, on a management server, it's very likely we'd want to know when there's a certain percentage of disk space left so we can be proactive and start moving logs to other servers and take other countermeasures as opposed to just letting the logs continue to grow and grow until we have no disk space and then perhaps we have a catastrophic failure. Now another really cool feature with SmartView Monitor is the ability to create and view suspicious activity rules. Now in SmartView Tracker, which we covered in our Tracker video, we learned that we could go to Active Connections, which is very, very dangerous because of the load it puts on the system. And then from there, we could put in real-time blocks based on malicious traffic that we saw. Well, because we should never really go to the Active tab in SmartView Tracker in a production environment, that really isn't a viable solution for blocking traffic real time outside of our normal policy. But in SmartView Monitor, we have that same capability, but it doesn't put a huge impact on our system. So for example, if we have a whole flood of traffic, let's say there's a flood of ICMP traffic going out to a server, so we see this, how do we stop it? So perhaps maybe we're part of a redirection attack. There's the attacker out here. They send us a whole boatload of ping requests, They've spoofed the source address, so our entire network is forwarding out to this poor victim out here a bunch of ICMP traffic. If we wanted to block that, right in SmartView Monitor, first of all, we'd be able to see that large amount of activity, and secondly, we could go ahead and create a new rule that says, you know what, any ICMP traffic destined to this IP address from our network, let's go ahead and block it. Hit the button, and that's dynamically applied. It's not part of our policy package. It's a separate and immediate block based on our suspicious activity rules. And we can apply it to a single firewall or to all of our firewalls. We can also set a timeout so that it will expire when we want it to, allowing us to stop that immediate problem that we're looking at. And then if we determine it's a real problem that we need to address further, we might want to go ahead and include that as part of our permanent policy packages so that we don't have those challenges in the future. So these rules right here, the suspicious activity rules, are meant for temporary stop gaps in mitigating a problem that we're seeing on the network in real time. Now, as we go through this together, to get the most benefit out of this, you absolutely should be taking the time to lab this up on your own. Installing the manager and at least one gateway in a distributed deployment, or if you want to, use one virtual machine, and you can put the gateway and the manager on that same box, and that will still give you the hands-on practice with it. Now, if you're in an environment or in a place where you don't have access to your manager and to your firewall, but you still want to practice, you can still launch Smart Dashboard in demo mode, and you can still launch Smart View Monitor as well, and still practice with the interface. Because the secret to getting really comfortable with these tools is to simply use them over and over again. And that's my intention for you. My intention for you is to go ahead and have you watch this with me, have you practice it, and get those skills and comfort level using these tools. Our first job is to go ahead and launch Smart Monitor. Now we can do that from the menu system in our Windows platform, or if we have Smart Dashboard running, which we do right here under this dropdown for Smart Console, we can simply launch Smart View Monitor right here. Or we can do a Control Shift M, and that would also do it for us. 
You'll notice in the top left hand corner it shows us exactly the management server that we're connected to 10.1.1.25 and the smart client utility that we're using which is smart view monitor. From here it's showing us all the gateways and the manager. Now it's by default the view is all gateways so if we click on any one of these. So regarding firewall headquarters one if we wanted to go ahead and click on system information it would give us the details regarding CPU utilization, disk utilization, memory, and on this page down below we also have options for setting up thresholds which we'll talk about here in just a moment. So if I want to go back I can use the back button, I can refresh this screen, or I can go ahead and click on the home button to take me back to where I was originally. If I want to take a look at network activity I simply click this hyperlink right here called network activity. Initially it says please wait for 10 seconds while well, it brings in the latest information regarding throughput and accepted packet rate. And these are real-time information. So if we want to refresh that, we can. We can manually do it. And that's focused on Firewall 1. So if we go back to the home page for that, it has the actual name of our policy package that's installed on it and when it was installed. If we click on the More option right here down to the, on the bottom right, it's suddenly giving us additional information. So there's a whole bunch of options on this left-hand side in this tree that we can use. And let's go ahead and take a look at a few of them. Let's go to Top Services. And it's going to say, OK, great. Which do you want to look at? Which firewall? And we can even get as specific as saying which interface on that firewall. And we can say we want inbound, outbound, or either bound. I'm not sure if they made that up or not, but it's a pretty cool word. So let's go ahead and select HQ Firewall 1. We'll click on OK. And this is for top services. And that's referring to the top services on this box as we look at it. So for example, we've got CPT AMON, which is application monitoring. We've got firewall log and a little bit of HTTPS. So let's force some traffic through this. This is a browser that's sitting on the PC at 10.1.1.50. Happens to be the same PC I'm running the smart console clients from. And let's go ahead and throw some traffic through it. So I'm going to do a, a refresh on Checkpoint's homepage. I'm going to go to a YouTube video. We'll take a look at a YouTube video. Just grab one that's on top. And let's go to a CBT Nuggets and play a video. And this is from my IPv4 subnetting course. So let's go back and let's go ahead and do a refresh on that page as well. I'll minimize this and let's take a look at our output. So we've got logging, HTTPS, we had some HTTP. So this is real-time information of what's happening on Firewall 1 at that moment. Let's take a look at top destinations where traffic is going. So we'll go ahead and click on that. We'll select our firewall, same one in this case, and it's going to pull in that information as well. So if we go back and regenerate some traffic, I'll do an F5 to refresh that. We'll go down and take a look. You can see there's just a lot of really cool information. That one refresh of the checkpoint page, it actually visited multiple sites. And those addresses are right down here of all the sites that we visited. So if we go to more, for example, we'll go up to, so let's play Google's Halloween greeting here. All right, so that's happening. And we'll also go to one more site. Let's go to CNN.com. That ought to pull up a boatload as well. So we'll go back down. And this is showing us the volume as well as the actual IP addresses for top destinations. So how about packet size distribution? We'll go ahead and click that one next for firewall one. If you want to see our distribution of packet sizes that we're processing through the firewall. And that could be really helpful too if we're trying to troubleshoot a QoS issue or something else like that. There's a section for traffic. There's a section for system counters. For example, if we take a look at the system for firewall one, this is showing us CPU usage, free disk, used virtual memory, and we have options for how we want to see that. So there's a line view, there's the bar view, and let's go ahead and take a look at system counters for firewall, for firewall one again. Now as we select each of these views, it's adding tabs for each one across the top. So here's the all gateways, here's the top services, top destinations, packet size distribution. Let's go to top destinations again, and let's put that one in a line view. There we go, that's nice and fun. Now if we want to see all those at the same time, we can go up here to these options. We can tile horizontally or tile vertically, and just basically play with those to see which one suits your needs the best. And then you can remove the ones that you don't want, like let's get rid of that one, and let's also get rid of that one, and let's go ahead and reorganize those. If we want our packets per second, if we want that to be a line view, we can put that like that. Whatever makes the most sense or however you'd like to see it. Let me go ahead and collapse the traffic section and the system counters. There's also an entire section for tunnels. Now we haven't enabled any user identity services yet for users on the network. We will, and after we add those features, we could also have Smart Monitor then show us details based on those users, which is really, really cool. Now when we first launched Smart View Monitor, if we always wanted one specific view to come up, we could simply select top services by right-clicking on it and saying, you know what, I want to go ahead and run this at startup. 
So that way, when you start Smart View Monitor, you won't have to do that extra click to bring up the top services or whatever view you wanted to see when Smart Monitor opens up. So with these views open, let's go ahead and send a little bit more traffic through. I'm going to go to Checkpoint, do a refresh there. We'll do a refresh on CNN, and we're still playing a CBT Nugget, which is fine. And let's go and play another video right there. All right, and with all that happening, our real-time monitoring is going to reflect those changes. Also, if we wanted to tweak one of these views, for example, we wanted to set up the properties, we wanted to filter out some traffic based on a filter, we could go ahead and set that up, and then we could save it. So we could go ahead and say, you know what, I want to save my customized view, and you could call it whatever you'd like to, and it would save it in the tree on the left. So that way, if you have some work you've done, you don't have to redo that work every time you bring up that view. If you want to freeze a view in time, you can simply click on the pause button right here, and that will freeze it in time to release it. You can go ahead and click it again. If you want this to be a pie chart, we can do that as well. Here's a table view. And if we wanted to export this view, we could do that as well. We could actually save it as an HTML document if we wanted to share it with somebody else. So let's go back to our pie chart. That's pretty fun. Now let's say we want to set up some thresholds for a specific firewall regarding disk space or CPU utilization or anything else. To do that, we'd first of all want to get our eyes on that firewall. So I'm going to go to all gateways and then let's pick on firewall one. So we simply highlight it and right click and then from the drop down menu, we're going to select configure thresholds. Now we can either use the global settings and we can see what those are by clicking edit global settings or we can set our own custom thresholds for this firewall. So for example, if we want to get an alert when the CPU usage is more than 90%, generate an alert. When free disk space is less than 15%, generate an alert. So we could turn those on or off as we wanted to. Or if we did want to use the global settings and we wanted to tweak the global settings, we could simply click on edit global settings right here and then simply set those up. And what will happen is, let's say somebody installs a brand new policy. Well, if the old policy was installed at 4 p.m. and the next policy is install installed at 4.05 p.m., that may not be a big deal. It's no big deal. Somebody just pushed a new policy. But if we want to see an alert, Smart View Monitor is going to generate an alert if that policy time changes. So we'd go ahead and see it. Now, to actually make this work, we need to do a couple things. So we click on OK here. We need to make sure that the alert service is enabled inside of Smart Monitor. It's really important. So we need to set that up. And to do that, we're going to go to the Launch menu. And from the Launch menu, we're going to go to Tools. And we simply select Start System Alert Daemon right there. It's currently running, and that's why it's grayed out. So let's go ahead and stop it for a moment. And let me show you what it looks like when we'd want to go ahead and enable it. So Launch menu, Tools, and we want to go ahead and start that service. The other thing we want to make sure we do is make sure we have a license for Smart View Monitor, and we'd want to make sure that Software Blade, which is the terminology that Checkpoint uses regarding a feature set, we'd want to make sure that's enabled on the firewalls themselves. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize Smart View Monitor. And in Smart Dashboard, let me walk you through how easy it is to make sure that the monitor feature is enabled on each of our firewalls. We go to the Firewall Objects. Here's Firewall 1. You simply double click on it to edit it. And this checkbox right here, Monitoring, this is the Software Blade that enables us to use Smart View Monitor and get those details from Firewall 1. So we'd make sure that's on for Firewall 1. We'd also want to make sure that's on for Firewall 2, which it currently is. And that's the reason we can see those details on those firewalls. So we'll click on Cancel because we didn't make any changes. So to demonstrate getting an alert, let's go ahead and push policy once again out to the firewalls, which will change the install date and time for the policy. So we'll click on Install Policy. I'm going to say, please don't create a new database version. That's OK. It's going to verify our policy, and it's going to push it out. All right, fantastic. So that's done. Let's go back to Smart View Monitor. So if we want to see the alerts now, all we need to do is go up to this little icon right here called Alerts, open it up, and there's our two alerts, one for each firewall, indicating that a new policy has a new policy date and timestamp has been applied on those firewalls. So if we wanted to, we could display those as pop-ups when the alerts come up. We could play a default sound. We could leave those here, or we could say, I want to go ahead and delete one of them, or delete all of them, and then close. Now, one of the other really cool features in Smart View Monitor is the ability to dynamically block traffic without creating a separate policy using the suspicious activity rules. Now, we have a couple of options in creating these rules. Number one, we can simply go up here to the Launch menu and go to Tools and select from the drop-down Suspicious Activity Rules. From here, we can see any that are in place. We can also click on Add, and we can manually add a new rule. Another option 
for deploying this suspicious activity rule is we could take a look at top services, for example, on a headquarters one. So let's take this top services view. I'm going to maximize that just for a moment. And let's go ahead and do some, a refresh here. Let's do a refresh and do F5 and go back and take a look at it. Now, if we want to take HTTP, I'm going to right click and say block service right here. So I selected HTTP that was currently flowing through. I'm clicking on block service. And now what I could say is, all right, I want to block TCP port 80 from anywhere to anywhere, or I could specify a certain address. And that's how I could do it. Another example is this. Let's go ahead and bring up a command prompt. And let's do a ping dash t to 8.8.8.8. And that'll just do a, a ping forever until we stop out to that IP address. So that ping is going on. And here that's showing up right here. So we have a fairly slow network. There's not much going on. We have the management server. We've got the inside PC. And that's pretty much it. So here's our echo request. So let's say I just saw a ton of that that was going out. And we wanted to block that. We simply right click, select block service. And what this is saying is from any to any, if it's ICMP, we could make that more granular. I could say, I only want to block ICMP to 8.8.8.8 after looking at the traffic and seeing what's going on. And how long do we want to block it? Let's say we want to go ahead and block it for uh, the next 10 minutes. We could also say, I want to block it until a specific time. So I'm going to say, based on the next 10 minutes, we'll click on advanced. It's showing us the action. It's going to drop and create a log. We're also going to close existing connections. Now with ICMP, <laughs> there's not going to be a lot of uh, connections involved because it's simply connectionless traffic. But if it was a TCP session, current connections for that would be closed, meaning not allowed through the firewall. So we'll go ahead and click on OK, and we'll click on Enforce. And take a look at this echo request traffic here. You notice how it's diminishing, <laughs> and the echo replies are as well. We also have this FW1SAM. SAM is an acronym for several things, including suspicious activity monitoring. And you'll notice our echo requests have now gone down to zero. The pings are no longer working, and that's because we've just deployed this rule. Now we can still have other traffic that goes out. If we do a refresh on checkpoint right here, for example, that comes up, no problem. It's just ICMP traffic destined to 8.8.8.8 that's not making it out. So let's go ahead and minimize that again, and we'll minimize that as well. And let's go ahead and undo or take off that rule. To do that, we'll go to the icon here. It looks like a little firewall. It's the icon for suspicious activity rules. We'll click on that. And you can say, I want to see the rules on a specific firewall, or you can say, I want to see them on all firewalls. So here's our one and only rule, denying traffic from anywhere to 8.8.8.8. .8 if it's ICMP, we're dropping it, we're logging it. So if we wanted to remove that, we could simply say, I want to go ahead and remove it. Are you sure? Yes. And now it's gone. If we look at our traffic in that right-hand column, the SAM traffic has gone back up. That's enforcing the rule. And now our ICMP echo request and the associated replies are back in force. That's because our ping is now working. So a couple of things to remember. When we do these dynamic rules, please do them through Smart Monitor. Do not, do not do them through the Smart Tracker that we demonstrated in the Tracker video in this course. The right place to do it would be right here in SmartView Monitor. And the second thing I'd like to remind you of is this is not a great way to implement our policy. Policy packages are how we implement policy. This is for a quick, short-term remediation of some bad thing that's happening on your network, which you want to come to a complete stop, including closing any existing sessions of that traffic that you're trying to stop. So if you don't have a manager and a gateway up and running, Use demo mode. It's so amazing what they did for us. We select demo mode in Smart Dashboard, click on login. Because in demo mode, we can still from Smart Dashboard, we can launch Smart View Monitor. And in Smart View Monitor, check this out. We can take a look at all that same kind of detail. Top services, top interfaces, top connections. We can arrange those as we want to. And if you'll notice, in this demonstration they've given us, they're simulating live traffic going through. So for example, if we had this AOL traffic right here in this demo mode, right clicked on it, if we wanted to go ahead and block that service, we could go ahead and enforce that rule and check it out. A AOL traffic is gone. Even though it's a simulation, it's fantastic in practicing with those skills. Now in a simulation like this, in this demo mode, it may not correctly reflect all the live behavior that your live environment would, but it certainly does give you the opportunity to practice with the interface, and become comfortable with the details of Smart View Monitor. Demo mode is also a great way to practice with Smart Tracker and creating policies in Smart Dashboard as well. 
our action items for this video are really simple. Number one, I want you to practice everything we did together in this video. I want you to do it hands-on. You can either use your practice environment or you can run demo mode with smart dashboard and smart view monitor. Either way is fine as long as you do the practice. Because it's important. The more you practice now and the better your skills get, the more prepared you'll be in a production environment to use these tools effectively. The second thing I'd love you to do is go back to the beginning of this video and check out those opt-out questions. Now that we've gone through this content together, you should be able to comfortably and accurately answer those questions. I've had a great time. I appreciate you joining me. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.